Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to determine the water of crystallization of a compound by heating. In the last video we saw that certain compounds contain water molecules within their crystal structure. This is called water of crystallization. Compounds which contain water of crystallization are called hydrated compounds. Water of crystallization is shown by a dot in the formula, like I'm showing you here. Now we can determine the value of the water of crystallization by carrying out experiments. And in this video, we're looking at the heating method. Okay, I've got here a sample of hydrated copper sulfate. Hydrated copper sulfate forms blue crystals. So how can we determine the value of the water of crystallization? Well, here's the formula of hydrated copper sulfate, and we're trying to determine the value of X. In other words, the number of molecules of water of crystallization per copper sulfate. Now, if we heat hydrated copper sulfate, then we can drive off the water of crystallization. This leaves us with anhydrous copper sulfate. If we can determine the mass of anhydrous copper sulfate and the mass of water, then we can calculate the value of X. OK, so let's look at the method. First, we take an empty boiling tube and we weigh this using a balance. We then place several spatulas of hydrated copper sulfate into the boiling tube and then weigh the boiling tube again. Next, we calculate the mass of the hydrated copper sulfate that we added. To do this, we subtract the mass of the empty boiling tube from the mass of the boiling tube containing hydrated copper sulfate. Next, we heat the boiling tube over a roaring Bunsen burner flame. This dries off the water of crystallization as steam. We weigh the boiling tube every couple of minutes until the mass stops decreasing. At this point, we've driven off all of the water and we're left with anhydrous copper sulfate, which is white. At this point, we now weigh the boiling tube and contents again. Now we can calculate the mass of anhydrous copper sulfate. To do this, we subtract the mass of the empty boiling tube from the mass of the boiling tube containing the anhydrous copper sulfate. OK, now we're ready to calculate the value of the water of crystallization. Using our results, we know that the mass of hydrated copper sulfate was 7.748 grams, and the mass of anhydrous copper sulfate was 4.954 grams. The difference between these two values represents the mass of water driven off. So in this case, the mass of water was 2.794 grams. OK, going back to our hydrated copper sulfate, we now know what mass is the copper sulfate and what mass is the water. So now we need to calculate the number of moles of these. To do that, we divide the masses by the molar masses of each compound. The molar mass of copper sulfate is 159.6 grams per mole and the molar mass of water is 18.0 grams per mole. From this, we have 0.031 moles of copper sulfate and 0.155 moles of water. Finally, we calculate the ratio between these numbers by dividing them both by the smallest number. In this case, the smallest number is 0.031 moles. This gives us a ratio of one copper sulfate to five water. So from this, we know that the value of the water of crystallization is 5. Coming up, I'll give you a question to try yourself. Okay, here's a question for you to try. 9.816 grams of hydrated iron 2 sulfate was heated until the mass stopped decreasing. The final mass was 5.369 grams. Calculate the value of x. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, so we know that the mass of hydrated iron 2 sulfate was 9.816 grams and the mass of anhydrous iron 2 sulfate was 5.369 grams. So the mass of water lost must have been 4.447 grams. Going back to the formula of our hydrated iron 2 sulfate, we now know the mass of iron 2 sulfate and the mass of water present. We can now calculate the number of moles of each by dividing by the molar masses. From this, we have 0.035 moles of iron 2 sulfate and 0.247 moles of water. Finally, we find the ratio between these numbers by dividing by the smallest number. In this case, the smallest number is 0.035 moles. Dividing both numbers by 0.035 moles 
gives us a ratio of 1 iron 2 sulfate to 7 waters. So from this we know that the value of the water of crystallisation is 7. Now there are a couple of potential problems with this method. Firstly, if the value of the water of crystallisation is less than expected, then that suggests that not all of the water molecules were driven off during heating. Secondly, if the value of the water of crystallisation is greater than expected, then that suggests that the compound has underwent further decomposition. In other words, once the water has been driven off, the anhydrous compound has then decomposed to a different compound. This could take place, for example, with a metal carbonate, which would undergo thermal decomposition to form a metal oxide. In this reaction, carbon dioxide gas would be released. This would cause the compound to lose more mass than if just the water had been removed. In the next video, we look at determining water of crystallization by titration. <laughs>